Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separated. How you guys doing out there? Hope you're having a wonderful day today. You know, we got a special guest in the building. You know, we got community activist, Rail Tyra. She got a program. She's got an Easter egg hunt that she's promoting. And it'll be over like 300 eggs. Um, this we is have like 600 the, now. <laughs> Y'all, that's like 600. So go ahead and tell them a little bit about the event and what you got going on. So March 29th, um, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., we'll be at the Connections Event Center on Washington. Um, we will have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. We will separate it in age groups just because we got little kids, big kids. You don't want the little kids to get trampled by the big kids because, you know, when you throw eggs out there, the kids don't go crazy. So um, we will start the hunt at four o'clock just to give enough people the time to get there and things like that, have refreshments. We'll have the Easter Bunny there taking pictures with all the kids and whoever want to take pictures. We will have a face painter. There will be a bounce house as well. Um, there will be food, chips. There will be Easter baskets for as many kids as we can. And then for the, you know, when we run out of baskets, we do have Easter bags. So every kid will leave with a bag or a basket. And um, we have music and things like that. So it's a kid family friendly environment. So, you know, there's no alcohol, there's no smoking. And it's just, we just want everybody to come out and have fun. Bring the kids out, let them just have some innocent fun. You know, like we used to do when we was kids. So right. that's just all it is. So what inspired this event? Is this like something you do annually every year or is this something this you do This is actually first my time? first community egg hunt. I normally do it, you know, between me and my friends and the family and our kids, you know, we'll cook, do our thing on Easter. I mean, I always do stuff in the community for the kids. I just never did an Easter hunt, you know what I'm saying? Or did anything for Easter. So I just looked at it like, you know, we always do it. I was going to do one for my kids. And I thought about, you know what, let me just go ahead and make it a community thing. Because when I originally planned it, it was for my family and friends and stuff. And then I just thought about, man, I ain't did it in the community a minute. Let me jump off with that. It's that simple. And we know that you currently living out of town. You know, yep, I live in Alabama, down here in the dirty south. <laughs> right. And you're currently doing this back in Michigan. Mm -hmm. What? What is it in your heart, man, to keep making you give back to your community? Like you said, you could have easily did it for your family, but you involved the community as well. And you're doing it, you know, like you organize this from another state. You know, it just shows the, the love and the unconditional love that you have for your community. It shows that the attachment and it shows that even though you have advanced to somewhere else, you still reach your back and still trying to help Saginaw. Like, where did you get that that heart from? You know, where did you get that compassion from for your city? Because of how I grew up. It was it comes from my upbringing. You know what I'm saying? My grandma raised me, and she raised me in the church. And, you know, when we was in the church, unlike a lot of things now, we did a lot of things in the community. Our church was not considered really a church. It was considered an outreach. And we really kind of targeted, like, the low-income areas and the poverty areas from our church. That's what my auntie always did. We did everything for the people, you know, poverty stricken, mainly because we are usually the ones, you know, I should have put down that. mainly because we're the ones lacking, you know, on our side. So you got to kind of give to your people. And I came from that part. You feel me? No, I didn't really have a poor lifestyle, but I came from a, a poverty stricken neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And so you just kind of got to give back. I just didn't stick to one side because I was from one side. I felt like everybody on that side of the bridge was poverty stricken. So it's for everybody in our hood, you know what I'm saying? For the people that don't get it. And you know what I'm saying? You just got to give back to your people because nobody's going to give it to it. Like, you know, by you being out there in Alabama, you know, you could have easily been like, I'm just focused on what I'm doing out here and not did this back in Saginaw. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you your connection with you and your city is deep, you know, as far as you're giving back. You I know? love my city. Without my city, it wouldn't have been a big real if we want to be truthful. Yeah, I built my name, but I built my name 
by getting the respect in the community from the people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people remember me. I lived in the hood, but I went to the township schools. Yeah, they were good schools, but I never was able to kick it with my friends until I came back to the hood because I didn't have no friends. You get what I'm saying on the West Side? So when it boils down to it, I could have done a whole lot of things, but like I said, without my community, it wouldn't be no big real. My community stood behind me. You know what I'm saying? Ten toes. Everything I've always wanted to do, they just literally went off a blind idea and donated, sponsored. Like, you know what I'm saying? It really got to be in you. Like, I love my city. You know what I'm saying? So what gave you the heart and what gave you the drive to, to consistently be there for your city while you away down south in Alabama? You know? That's the city that built me, though. I come from that mud. So, honestly, had I not had the support of that community, I, I wouldn't have never been Big Rail. I would have just been Sherelle. You know what I'm saying? You have to have people that support you or believe in what you're doing or like what you're doing in order to even build your clientele. You know what I'm saying? Your, whatever you choose to do. With, my, with what I was doing... I started out doing giveaway. You know what I'm saying? I started out being a nonprofit and that's really what draw everybody in. Cause it was like, dang, like we went to school with her. Oh, I know her, you know what I'm saying? Oh, she from the hood and you, you over here giving stuff away. But they also remember coming to our church and me giving away with my AT. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you don't leave home and forget about home. You get what I'm saying? Like so many people leave and go away. I, and I understand the city can make you mad. It's like, man, fuck Satin and all, but it's more so like you can't say that because it's not Saginaw. It's the people in Saginaw. You know what I'm saying? Because although Saginaw may be a fucked up place to live, we still got family there. You know what I'm saying? I got nieces there, nephews, cousins. You know what I'm saying? Play friends. I got people that I love and care about. You know what I'm saying? So I got people I've built relationships with. I've built, you know, a lot of stuff there. So because I left doesn't mean I I, I forget my city because without yeah. them, a I lot wouldn't of people here. Would move. A lot of people, when they move, they just be like, listen, I moved away. I'm done with that city. You know, um, I don't want nothing else to do with it. You know, I'm moving on to my new life. But, but even with your new life, you still tether in back to your old community. And we need and we and we need more of that. We need more of that. You know, because you're bringing that down south energy back back here to the Midwest you know, and giving us some of that flavor and, and, and spicing it up a little bit. Yeah, and then my mind frame has changed. Like, my mind frame has changed. Like, it, some of the people that move away and just say, forget Saginaw, it's because they really never built nothing in Saginaw. So they don't have a reason to feel like feedback into, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I was fed from Saginaw. You get what I'm saying? I Every bag I made, every, you know what I'm saying? I, I made 50,000. You feel me? In the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? In Saginaw. You feel me? With them people. I didn't get my money and run to Miami and all that shit. I got that money and we turned up in the city. You feel me? And I but started just doing more. Sometimes as a, you know, when you migrate to somewhere else, a lot of people don't know how to manage the motion that they have back there. They don't know how to control their business from another state. You know, they don't have the resources or they don't have the loyal individuals that they need to make it still run like a well-oiled machine once they're out of town. So, because I know you have a nonprofit business with the pantry. Like, how do you, like, how do you keep the pantry running well, you know, and how do you stay tapped in with your people where you keep the pantry running like a well-oiled machine, even though you're in Alabama? So let me break this down to you when it comes to the nonprofit. The pantry is a nonprofit and Big Rail is a nonprofit. You feel me? The pantry is under the name of the church. I'm just a partner with it. However, because I had the knowledge of it, I jump started it. It's ran by my family members. You know what I'm saying? I had a cousin who just came home from prison, which it was his mother's church, but he'd been in prison this whole time. You feel me? So while he was in there, he kind of changed himself around. It was like, you know, I'm, I want to do this. None of them had the knowledge because the people who had the knowledge is dead and the only one left was me. So in doing what I was doing in the community, see, I, I Big Rail, I built to have for me. Refuge Center is our family thing. You know what I'm saying? So I came from under the shadow. So Big Rail is the entity by itself. Mm -hmm. So there's a Big Rail and then there's a pantry. But it's ran by my cousin and his wife. 
You know, I kind of showed her the ropes. You know what I'm saying? We all used to sit down with the partners and build relationship that way. Because I knew what I was doing anyway. I already had a plan in my head that I was supposed to leave in 24. I left sooner, but I knew I was leaving. So I had to prepare because one thing about it, when you run a nonprofit, it's just like a business. We just don't earn no money from it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so with that being said, I had to make sure she knew what she needed to know, the people she needed to know, the places she needed to go. That way, when I left, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I had like, I knew she was solid. That was the main thing. I knew she was solid. I knew I could leave and it'd be trusted with you till my cousin come home and we go. You know what I'm saying? Me and my cousin grew up in that church. In fact, she's from down here. So when I knew I had a solid person that would make sure this is real, that's what it is. When there was anything they need, we get on video calls and things like that. We talk to the partners. We still stay in communication. You know, technology is a mofo, so we're able to still communicate. You know what I'm saying? And whatever meetings need to be had, whatever business need to be taken care of. You know what I'm saying? And when I periodically come in, like I was just there for Christmas, I'm coming for Easter. I'm always going to check in on the business to make sure everything's good. So we just, great communication is really how we keep it flowing. And they got the, they got the relationship with the partners and sponsors now. So they don't really need me. You get what I'm saying? Now they're able to just take off. And you know, when, when it's something big or something going on, if I got to pop in, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm a pop in town and come do that. Roll my sleeves up, whatever needed. So I ain't forget about it, but you know, big rail don't die either. So mm -hmm. this Easter thing was a big rail thing. Right. So, and sometimes you can get to the point where you feel like the seeds that you planted in your life are not growing. You know? Most and definitely. I mean, you know, and you know, you start thinking about, am I in the right place? Is this place lining up with the things that I want to do? And, yeah. you know, we have to go out and spread our wings in other places. We have, to spread, we have to plant seeds in other places in order to make them grow. What was it that, that, that got to you? That made you say, "Man, you know what? I wanna, I wanna, I wanna redo over. I wanna migrate to someone else, to somewhere else, and I wanna start over." Mainly because I felt, I ain't gonna say trapped, but I started feeling smothered. I started feeling smothered in the city. You get what I'm saying? Like for a person like me and what I do. I do this for the community, but you have to understand I do the same for my family and friends. I carry a real heavy mantle, you feel me? I take care of a lot of people and I'm there for a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, as an individual. You know what I'm saying? And it's nothing that I I, I have a problem with because, you know, it's just what my calling is. I've tried to get away from it. I've tried to deny it. I've tried to run from it. When it's in you, it's just in you. It's like something that eat at you. You just can't help it. Like, I just can't help but help people. I don't know how to do really nothing else. All I know how to do is help people and take care of people. Mm. So it was just I was feeling smothered. And because I always think big, I already knew, like, I could go anywhere and still do what I need to do here. You know what I'm saying? I didn't organize birthday parties, different things from out of town. So doing that wasn't nothing. It's just you got to become more strategic. And I never stopped communicating with the people that supported me and the people that had my back and things like that. I always still stayed in tune with the community because even though I wasn't doing stuff in the community, I jump on live, do a raffle. You know what I'm saying? Like I just did the senior. I just sponsored two seniors for prom. Jumped on a raffle. You know what I'm saying? Just um, I done did a few raffles since I've been here. So, you know, I still stay in tune doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I did some grocery giveaways. I blessed some families for Christmas. You know what I'm saying? I had them pull up to the pantry, get big boxes to feed their whole family for the holiday. So you just stay in touch with people like you don't leave and just forget everybody. Like when I got here, yeah, things went on and things happened. And I went through some big adversities when I got here. So I shut down for a moment. You get what I'm saying? I just shut down. But it was like, OK, once I got where I needed to get, I let my mind open up. And it's like, all right, back to business as usual. You get what I'm saying? Like you just got to roll with it, though, for real. Like it's life. But when it's your passion and it's something that's really in you, it's like birthing a baby. You don't. Just leave your child because they made a lot of mistakes or because it ain't perfect. You just keep being that mama. All right. So give me one of your since you've been, you know, you know, you've been so much of you've been of so much service to the community. And you know, doing things with these giveaways and and with the pantry. Give us one of your most memorable moments 
that you feel like was the highlight of your heart for your your was the highlight of your giving back was the highlight of what are your biggest moments in the community like far as the things i've done yeah um it was one of the most memorable moments one of the most precious moments that that mean the most to you the first year i decided to start blessing seniors see i used to pick five seniors every year like i like one day i'll tell you what happened what happened is i woke up to a deposit one day no cap woke up to a large deposit and it was like you know a voice in my head was like sure you know what it's, it's graduation season bless them bless them seniors so i put out the bless seniors and i just put it out there on the internet like i do everything else like i just want to bless some seniors and people just start dropping names you know what i'm saying dropping names dropping names and i picked up it ended up being five black young boys so you know when it comes to the black men i it just it do something for me so i'm like oh this is beautiful and so what i did was just had them meet me you know what i'm saying i reached out to them and had people reach out to them like look you know what i'm saying y'all were chosen meet me at I, we met up on genesee uh where uh what's that right there in front of the car wash right there by inez and stuff in that barber shop the pastor's wife's uh, barber shop but anywho pastor uh taurus his wife pastor simpson's wife in, in her parking lot and I had them meet me and I went to the store, bought some balloons, got them some large chocolate chip cookies made, like a big cookie cake. And I pulled out with a card, you know what I'm saying? And stuffed some money in it. Nobody really knew what was in it until they left. And then it was just like, but when I was there, I, you know, I kind of just spoke life into them because they're young black men. You know what I'm saying? Black men are torn down a lot by us, by the world. So I met with them and it was just a moment for me to just kick it with them. And just let them know, like, we're proud of you for even making this step. You know what I'm saying? That's a huge accomplishment in today's world, making it across the stage for seniors. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really an accomplishment if you can graduate from college. But wow. I just be so proud when our black kids make it. And just the fact that they, you know what I'm saying, these young black boys could have been out here anywhere. I know where they could have been. But the fact that y'all got y'all grades up enough to be able to walk, got y'all cap and gowns, let me bless you. So I blessed them with 250 apiece. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kind of said a little prayer with them and send them on their way. Next thing I know, I just got moms calling, breaking down, crying. And I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know, I'm emotional. So I'm just like, you know, they like, what made you do that? Like, why, who are you? Where did you come from? And it was just to see how I blessed somebody, just to see how it made them feel. And one of the moms was like, I did not have the money for his college dorm. He needed this. It's some type of fee they have to pay when they stand in the dorm. She said, do you know you blessed me? I did not know what I was going to do. Prime, everything wiped me out. So to know that I've been a life changer to some people, that's that 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 right there just gave me the drive. Like, I'm going to do this every year. And even right. though I went to adversity, I did it again this year. Right. But I did it for prom this year. So I kind of took care of their hair, their glam, right. you know, the boy's haircut, his pedicure. I mean, his uh, manicure, his facial. I just took that's care of all that. Paid for it. You ain't nothing like having a good heart. Most people need to have a good heart like you. And but you experienced some um, tragedy along the way because I know you're a transportation specialist as well. Yeah. Um, um, let's talk a little bit about you know because you do you do a lot of transportation, you know. But you experienced a, a difficult moment. Tell us a little bit about that moment that you experienced, man. And. and and how does that moment still plays into your life and impact you still to this day? Listen, so one night I was transporting. This is probably early in my transport. Honestly, it wasn't late. It was in my early, I probably was like maybe two months in. I don't even think I was a month, uh, maybe about a month in, because this was like December or so of that year. And um, I had just opened business in November, but business was booming. Like it took off, like, I didn't even expect it. Like it took off so good. It scared me. You get what I'm saying? Like it was that. So me being on the grind and hustling, if you call me three in the morning, I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, I everything been so smooth. So I pull up and get a guy one night. I'm thinking nothing of it. You get what I'm saying? And um, you know, I'm transporting as usual, just doing my job. And um, we get out to like a secluded area out in the township, like back there in Carlton area. And he just out of the blue just started attacking. He hit first, he hit me with some spray. You know, I think it was pepper spray, one of those things. And at the time I had a big Tahoe. 
You know what I'm saying? I had literally just took my rims off, so I had all weather tires because I probably would have flipped them up. But I'm driving, can't see. You know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, I start feeling them like, you know what I'm saying? I felt like he was stabbing me. And somehow I lost control of the car and it went up. I lost control of the truck and it went up on the grass and I crashed into a swimming pool out there in the township. When I did that, he was still, you know, stabbing me. And I'm reaching, I, I'm a carrier. You get what I'm saying? So I have my weapon on me, but you know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm just tripping right now because I'm thinking, what? <laughs> what did you, what the hell is going on right now? Because why would you be doing this? So I, I grabbed for my door trying to get it open and I happened to slide. By this time, he got my hoodie wrapped around my neck. I used to ride in a hoodie. And so as I'm trying to get out and just trying to figure out life right now, because what the fuck am I dying or is I about to die? I happen to get under there. One thing I've always did, though, knowing that I'm out at night, we ain't supposed to, but I always kept one in the chamber. You know what I'm saying? Because just the what if moment. Well, this was the what if moment that actually happened. So when I grabbed it, I literally just shot over my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? After that, I hear the door. I fall out of the truck and I'm running under there. I hear some gunshots in the, like a, a distance. I feel a lady come grab me. It was a white lady and a man, an older white couple. And I, to this day, I still check on them, send them gifts and stuff. Because they say, to me, I feel like they saved my life. She drugged me out because I couldn't see. I, I'm blind at this point. And I'm crawling up in the snow, crawling up her stairs. She pouring it on me and everything. Well, her husband had hawked the man down. I didn't even know I had shot him until, like, literally we left the hospital, went to the precinct. And they like, yeah, well, had you not put a slug in him, we wouldn't have caught him. I'm in there crying. Like, I know the man tried to kill me, but here I'm emotional because I'm like, damn, I shot him. I shot somebody. Like, no, I'm not a killer. They like, you the most remorseful person we've ever seen. I'm like, I, like, I didn't know I killed him. I, I heard gunshots. He was like, yeah, the man who helped me was an old sheriff. And he shot some warning shots in the air and the man just dropped in the yard, but he was already shot. You know what I'm saying? And they had called the police and that's oh, kind of so how they came. Was in the car, you shot back. I shot you back, hit. but I didn't know that I hit him. I just shot. I, I couldn't see where I was pointing. I didn't know if I hit him. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing. I just shot off one just to scare him. And I actually shot him, caught him in the head. So, you know what I'm saying? It was a, that's a moment because number one, you know, I ain't no killer for real. You know what I'm saying? That, that ain't my forte. I'm a lover for real. So to have to even do that, it, it, it messes with me a lot still because it's like, damn, why would I be in this position? Like, damn, I'm out here just doing good deeds. You know what I'm saying? But even doing a good deed is dangerous. You got to think everybody don't care about that good deed. Everybody don't have that mind frame. Till this day, I don't know why he did what he did, but he did what he did. You know what I'm saying? He got 65 plus double life. So I got my justice, but at the same time, it was a very scary situation. Like I shut down for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because I was way too terrified to go back out there. You know what I'm saying? So what? So, yeah. so how so how how long did you quit driving? I quit driving for probably about a week. Okay. And then when I got back out there, I just cut my hours. And then I had started hiring drivers and drivers and drivers, but that didn't really go well because, you know, people don't work well. They don't got good customer service. So by my name meaning so much to me, it'd be like, no, you can't drive for me no more because, you know what I'm saying? When a person hits me and complain, that's bad rep. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build my momentum out here. Yeah, I don't need no complaints. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to have no complaints. You know, I, I'm too early in my career to have a complaint. You got to think. They know me as Big Real the, Nonprofit. I'm a business now. Like I'm taking y'all money for this now. You know what I'm saying? So I, it, it matters a lot. So it's like I just kind of have to separate a lot of things, and I just, you know, just you know what I'm saying. Until I got back comfortable, I didn't drive like third shift for real. You know what I'm saying? And if I did pick you up at night, it was females because I have females that used to go out there to the Walmart three, four in the morning. Them, I would pick them up. But one thing so about it, stopped, I kept that so strap you stopped, on. So you stop transport men late night. It's yeah, not, I stopped transporting me and late night. Been, it had to be female only. Yep, and then I so ended up getting another. Go ahead. Huh? No, I ended up getting another vehicle, and then that vehicle we had the petitioner up. So that's when I got back to let me go ahead, you know what I'm saying, make something happen. And I started doing third shift then. And then I just got right back comfortable and I just started trapping it out. And it was cool after that. So what would you tell the <laughs> next transportation? Um, worker out there 
Yeah. What advice would you give them? You know, after you went through what you went through, went through the adversity you went through, what would you tell the next person out there that's transport for Uber, Lyft, and got their own transportation business? What your advice is to them? Safety first. I'm going to be honest. Safety first. Because although you would think nothing like that would happen to you, because I always thought that, like, you know what I'm saying? I know there's people that might not care for me. Ain't nobody out here want to really kill me. You can't never be too sure. People who got really sick, twisted mind, mental health is real. So you don't have to give a person a reason to want to kill you, you don't and take your life. You never know who you picking up. You don't never know who you picking up. And I, it, it could have been a woman did it. You know, I had a female get in the car. I'm beat your boo, and I have to put her. You know what I'm saying? So you go through things. So the first thing is safety first. Number one, make sure you're a carrier or got some type of self defense. I would also always suggest putting that. You know what I'm saying? That petition up. That way, it keeps you safe. Because had I had to petition up, he wouldn't have been able to get me. And I really left the scene un untouched. Like my hoodie was cut up. I ain't had no scratches though. So it could have been a lot worse because the way he was, you know what I'm saying? He could have, yeah. So safety first. Whatever you do, safety first. And there you have it. So we got this Easter egg hunt coming up on the 29th. Where's it located at? March 29th at the Connections Event Center. It's right by Rita's. Um, I don't have the flyer in front of me to give you the address, but it's on Washington, right by Rita's. And we also will have the park across the adjacent where you know where they had a car show Friday night live. Um oh, okay. I like, right in that area. Yeah, so if, we we'll, we got over six hundred eggs. Okay. And so all I can tell you to do is like look for the bounce houses, look for the decorations. Yeah. Everything. That's, it's, yeah, it's going to be real nice out there. Easter, man, is one of my most favorable, most favorite holiday. Yeah, I was talking to someone earlier, and I said the most challenging thing for me as was for me as a kid, it wasn't nothing at school that was the most challenging thing for me. It was every year on Easter Sunday, Sunday having to pick a speech <laughs> and learn that speech and go out there and, and yeah. stand up in front of a crowd by yourself. And say it. <laughs> and that was the most terrifying thing to me. Oh, to my speak. God. Now, you ain't lying. I hated I it. I used to be terrified. That Listen, I used to dance in church. I would rather dance than get up there and do that speech. <laughs> I hated the speech. I hated oh, it. Right, I man, I hated giving those speeches, man. But, you know, since it's going to be Easter, man, I want to ask you some ludicrous and crazy Easter questions, man, that I want you to answer for us. Okay. All right. So, if the Easter Bunny could talk, what do you think he would say about your Easter egg hunt? It's lit. It's lit? It's lit. Yep. Okay. Have you ever had any unexpected visitors Human or otherwise, crash your Easter egg hunt. I had a dog crash my uh, book bag giveaway at Vets. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he had all the kids running. They was all on the bounce house, all on top of the rim. It was funny. <laughs> right. So what's the most creative or bizarre hiding spot you've encountered for Easter egg during one of your hunts? Mm. Man, we done found some spots. We done put them up in trees in the little squirrel holes. We done put them in the water drain. We done put them in, you know, the spokes of the cars that while the kids <laughs> jump in. We put them everywhere. We really be chatting. We especially the gold ones, because the gold ones got money in them. So we, yeah, we we yeah. Everywhere. So if you could create, if you could create an Easter egg hunt on any fictional world or movie set, where would it be and why? Disney World. What? I would have one at Disney World so cold. I would, because you know why? I'm going to tell you why I have it at Disney World. For six Easter straight for spring break, we always went to Disney World. I started going to Disney World when I was nine years old up until I was like, I think the last time we went, I was 14, 15. So every Easter was so memorable because we went to Disney World. I didn't get an Easter basket. We got clothes and we went to Disney World for our spring break, came back. You know what I'm saying? I, I, had, a, I had a blessed childhood in spite of, you know, the adversity of being created in this world. But <laughs> I had a good childhood to remember, so I would definitely love to take 
every kid to Disney World, not only just to have an Easter egg hunt, but to have that experience. You will never forget Disney World. It, even an adult okay. going there, it's like you're going to be a kid at heart. All right. Have you ever had any funny or unusual requests from participants, like requests their special themed eggs or challenge, challenging hunt conditions? What, for the Easter egg hunt? Yeah, like the different, like making the terrain more challenging, you know, or. You know what? Or no. I can't say I have. They usually just be, they rock with whatever I do. You know what I'm saying? It'd be cool. Like one thing when I create an event, I just try to think of every aspect so I can try to please every need or pleasure. You get what I'm saying? That's why I try to have food and cocktails and snacks and drinks and, you know, pictures and all that. Cause I know some people might can't even afford to go have Easter pictures. So we got the Easter money. We got the Easter backdrop. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get to have that at my stuff. So I don't it, it don't really I don't really leave a lot of room for requests because I just kind of cover everything I think you would want. There you have it. What's the weirdest Easter egg related superstition or myth you you heard from your you heard from your participants? I this one girl told me something about it was bad look not to hide real eggs. I don't know where, you know, I'm like, why? She was like, I, I can't remember what she said, but it was allegedly bad luck to hide plastic eggs and not regular eggs. I don't know. All I know is we hide plastic eggs and the kids have a plan. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What, People won't want to find the real. They don't want to find no egg in there. Yeah. They want to find the money or something in a plastic egg. Yeah, you can't get nothing. I mean, who want more egg? Right. <laughs> so, if you can design an Easter egg hunt for a specific celebrity or a historical figure, who would it be and how would you tailor the hunt to their personality? Mm, that's a hard question. Mm. I would probably organize one for uh, Monica, the singer. Mm -hmm. I would. I would probably mm -hmm. organize because I her 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 demeanor, her attitude, everything about her is so down to earth. Like I know it. I, I yeah, I would do it for her. And then you know, I, I know what she likes when it comes to the kids. Okay. All right. So a couple more. Have you ever had any mishaps or unexpected surprise doing an Easter egg hunt that turned out to be a memorable moment? No, I can't think of no mishaps. Okay. I can't really think of none, no. If you could recruit any animal, real or imaginary, to help with your Easter egg hunt, which one would it be and why? An Easter bunny. Well, a bunny. Because I want a bunny anyway. I really do want to go give me a bunny, but a bunny. Like, bunnies, they're real mild meat, mild, you know what I'm saying, animals and stuff like it's just like they're just pure love for real. If you ever think about a bunny, you don't really see no violent bunnies. They just really calm. They just relax. When they're around the house, they lay, bounce. They just, you know what I'm saying? They just warm and lovable and just, you know what I'm saying? It's like a sense of peace with a bunny. So I would definitely get a bunny. All right. All right. Last one. What's the craziest or most outrageous Easter egg theme you ever considered but haven't implemented yet? A glow in the dark one. I've wanted a glow in the dark Easter hunt. I, I, I don't know how that'll go, but you know how people have glow parties. I wanted a glow Easter egg. Like, I the, kids like, the, like, the, the kids like we were high, you know, we would yeah. get some eggs that glow in the dark. Everybody has right. shirts or something with, you know, glow in the dark right. stuff. You know, the whole kickaboodle, the hats, right. whatever we need to have a glow effect right. and a little green light. Yeah, I think that would be so dope. I do. I'm, I'm going to try to pull it off. Watch me. I'm going to try to pull it off, for real. So is there anybody that's um, helping you with the Easter egg hunt that you want to give a shout out to, man? Anybody that's um, working with you? Tatanisha Pearson. She uh, partnered with me when I let her know what I was doing. She just immediately was like, you know, I'm able to help. I want to help you this time. I always see you doing things. And I just really, you know what I'm saying, want to help and sponsor some things. So I'm like, 
Okay, that's dope. You know, I gave her the rundown. Listen, now you got to really do that because I've had people want to, you know, they say they want to sponsor a partner and I promote them and put them out there and really shrill cover it off. I just, you know what I'm saying, never blasted them. I guess I'm blasting them now, huh? <laughs> but, you know, she really did her part. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't have to carry the load by myself. So this did make it a lot easier for me this time. Because putting on an event, number one, mentally, psychologically, it's heavy. Because I still have to work every day. I still got to be kid, uh, with my kids every day. I still got things in my life. And down here where I'm at, I got to handle. But you have to think, you know what I'm saying? With planning, you got to get everything. I have to get a venue. You know what I'm saying? I have to get the flyers. You know what I'm saying? Start getting the things that we need for it. Start hitting up different vendors. You know what I'm saying? Well, what are we going to have? Okay, we're going to have this. You know what I'm saying? Get them paid and things like that. So, you know. She did pull her part, you know. She been running to the stores for me, you know what I'm saying? All that. She made right. our flyers, so tap in with her on that. She made our uh, promotional flyer, so you know. Um, I thank her a lot. Shout out to Tatanisha. I definitely thank her a lot. She's been a sweetheart. I'm like, please don't take a fish. She's like, girl, are you good? Because I know I'm anal when it yeah. comes to my yeah. Yeah. me doing what I do. I'm real anal. Like, it, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like to get distracted by too much other stuff. Like, I'm focused. You know what I'm saying? Even the day of. I ain't trying to chill, do wake and bake or nothing with nobody. Like, I'm focused. I got to make sure everything's in order. Every vendor is paid and comfortable. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's it's like an orchestration. You know what I'm saying? So you it's like vendors and everything out there. Yeah, we'll have food, we'll have the DJ out there, we'll have um photos, you know, we got a couple podcasters and some of the couple uh um vloggers coming out, you know what I'm okay. saying, just to check us out, things like that. And then you know, we got the community, we never know who show up. Like I never right. know. The news always come out with then, you know, the mayor will show up, other people from city council show up, you know, but I just prepare myself for whoever because I don't never know who coming. And by us being by the news station, I can see them being there because they came to Vince Park on us. So I can see right. them coming to that. So we just, you know, just want everybody happy. We want the kids happy. We want it safe. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't hire security because one thing about it, I come with good energy. So nobody brings back to anything I do. I've never had a fight, never had a, nothing happen at any of my events, not even with the kids. And it's record breaking so far. And I want to keep that clean slate. You know what I'm saying? That you know when you come to Big Rail event, you safe. You know what I'm saying? It's peaceful. Ain't nobody disrespected. We ain't doing no ghetto work. No, you know what I'm saying? We don't do none of that. We we straight business. There you have it. You know, man. And I want to thank you, man, for coming in and giving uh, giving YLC this interview. You know, sure. for you know, bringing your Easter egg hunt, you know, to the show so you know we can promote it. We know we need more people like you, you know, more people that's 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 genuine, that have a heart for their community, that really love their community, even yeah. when they move somewhere else. No matter how many hours, no matter how far, you know, you. And that's a long drive. I'm telling you, all y'all better thank me. I drive 14 hours. I'm telling you, I be driving. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't still fly. giving back to our community. So what I want you to do is um, give them your social media handle and um, give them your last words and we out of here. Okay. Well, you guys can find me on Real Tyler. I, that's the only platform I got now. I shut down the transportation page just until we revamp. Um, I don't really have much work. Well, I don't know. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate you. Shout out to you. Um, shout out to you know, all of the podcasters and things like that. And I just look forward to seeing my people this weekend. It's spring break. So, you know, immediately after I'm going to be big school. But I just want y'all to know that. Yeah, Big Real is really human. So, yeah, y'all going to see me somewhere outside. But just bring the kids out. Let them have a great time. I'm going to fill them with a lot of diabetes and a lot of good food. Um, and I just look forward to seeing the community and everybody and having fun and just the smiles and everybody enjoying themselves. That's, that's just really it. And thank you, man. You know, for everybody that tuned in, you know, because we need more, we, we need more heartened people like real. We need more warm people, more, 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 uh, more warm hearted people, you know, that's give back, you know, from their own pockets, 
You know, yeah. I was seeing her do events, you know, she could help me with events and, you know, give from our own pocket, you know. And we need more people like that, man, to add more beauty to the community, to be able to unify the community, to bring the community together in a unique way as to where it's safe, it's pleasant, and it's fun. You know, like her Easter egg hunt that's coming up on the 29th. You know, so I just want to wish everybody out there happy Easter. You know, we hope you guys enjoy your Easter. And don't forget to come out to the Easter egg hunt on March 29th. 29th. My, yep. On March 29th. What's the address, Real? I don't know. It's Connections Event Center. It's on Washington, right next to Rita's. There you go. And they'll be right in the parking lot, right across the street where uh where 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 Friday. Look for the balloon. Look for all the so colorful balloons in the bounce so house. Can't miss it. it. Can't miss it. We right on Washington. There you have it, man. So thank you guys for tuning in to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separate. Thank you guys <laughs> for tuning in.